Because, ladies and gentlemen, Denial is in the building! Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Fellas, I, I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know you guys are working hard getting the show in order. Please, if you could, uh, properly introduce yourself. Let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment. Plug anything you'd like. I'm Drew Krieger. Um, I play drums in Denialist. And we are in Dayton, Ohio right now. We're born and raised. Eric Fall, I'm the guitarist for uh, Denialist. And uh, yeah, what he said. I'm also born and raised right here in the old Dirty Dizzle. Dirty Dizzle, I like that, hell yeah. This is my co-host of the day by way, his name's JB. Uh, he's gonna be helping me out during the interview. Denialist, what, what, how did you come up with the band name? So it's a very unique, cool band name. Like you don't have to put any extra characters on it to, to find you guys or anything. So we were previously a band called Hail to the King. And um, we obviously like the event whole thing, which is whatever, you know, things happen. Um, but there was also like we were we knew that the singer was on his way out. And we were going to change singer, so it's just like an opportunity to like okay, we got to change the name anyways. We can kind of rebrand with this new singer and kind of just move and start anew. Um, we were working with our previous producer, Soda Med, and um, we played a band called Crimson Armada. I think at the time, Holy Guy was yeah. the main project he was in. Yeah. Um, and we had a song called Denialist, and he called it Denialist as like a joke. Yeah. Like in an email when he sent like the the mix or whatever, and we're like. Dude, let's call it Denial. Let's see, like, that's sick. And then shortly after, we changed the name to that. So, And when we changed the name, uh, like, we could not decide as a band. Uh, like, it was like a month of it, it was a month of, like, just girlfriends, just, uh, you know, that name sucks. That, yeah. you know, this, this is shitty. Give me you some, know, give me some, these names were ruled out, but you, you all, it was almost picked. Years ago. Man. Yeah, we're talking, we're talking, like, well, from the name change, we're talking about seven years ago. Yeah. Um, basically, what had happened, we, we, I, I can't even remember. Some like, of some of the stuff was, like, songs on that EP from Namacon. We thought about changing our name to Namacon. Uh, I think, what is that? Once on Blood something? Uh, Blood Crypt. Blood Crypt. We thought about calling ourselves that. Just didn't quite match, like, the... It was a little too metal or black metal or, like, death metal. We knew... Yeah. It, we didn't want to mislead people. Denialist is uh, middle of the road. I feel like... Bands like, uh, well, like Distortionist, Distinguisher, like we, we has that kind of ring. We're kind of that same, like, I would say, realm of metal. It was basically like we were all bickering, and then Drew was like, why don't we just say fuck it and call it one of our songs, Denialist? Mm -hmm. And all at the same time in unison, where we're like, we're not fighting. So yeah. I think this is going to work. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it. It's the one. That's oh, the I one. Know. Denialist. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Hell yeah. Well, you guys, you guys have been on a little bit of a break. We'll get to why in a minute. But for, for those that may not uh, know what your guys sound like, let's go hand and jam Death Letter, which I think is an absolutely superb track right here. And then we'll, we'll talk about Death Letter in a second. It's a slapper. It's a slapper for sure. Why the five year hiatus though? Uh, we broke up, man. Yeah, we actually, um, yeah, go ahead. no, no, no. Uh, we actually officially broke up back in, uh, 20 i think it was the very beginning of 2017 basically the last six months before denialist broke up um we just ran into a bad streak of just real bad luck like every like the biggest core offers that we were getting um they were like dropping like a day before like one of our bigger tours literally dropped like two days before yeah. and it canceled the whole tour it was just like it was basically just gut shot after gut shot of yeah. just bad things happening to us and then also at the same time we were all in like our early 20s and yeah. we could not we could not financially have the band working the way we wanted to and i think it was a mixture of being young and just kind of being in like that ex uh, that dread of like man like we are not doing this the way we want to be doing this and it's like it was causing all of us to even just like, we weren't even looking forward to doing band stuff. It was just, it was a real dark period. It was. And to add to that, like, to think about it, like we had been in, me and Derek have been in the since we were 16 years old together and uh, we're both closer to 30 than I'd like to be. So like, um, that being said, like we had been in bands and like, we had never really had, like we had jobs. We just kind of had things that would get us through to the next tour. 
And so like we didn't have a big financial structure or he does. We didn't really have super support of parents or whatever. Uh, bless those who do. Like, that's awesome. But like we did not like have a good structure underneath us when we started denialist man and like the things we wanted to do required more budget than we had and they just the tours like you said were not coming through and things were just kind of all bad and like we were all kind of growing up together and we were different parcel lives where we maybe wanted more and just so on and so forth getting into debt for the first time being able to even do that at our age because when we were teenagers it wasn't an option so yeah um, just taking big risks and falling flat on our face and that just is what it is yeah. I have a follow-up question, then I'm gonna let JB ask a couple and I'll queue up another song, but uh, in the same, kind of to roll off that, why get back together? So that's also a funny story. Um, so during COVID, as it was a slow time for everyone, Drew is in another band called Nefarious, mm -hmm. and uh, he was rocking and rolling with that. COVID happened, obviously his band had the slowdown, and uh, we were all still friends, but like Jordan, our vocalist, um, he lives an hour away. Um, and at the time, he actually lived almost two hours away. Yeah. And Denialist hadn't been in the same room together in, since we had broke up. Yeah, me and him would hang out, but like we wouldn't all hang out as a group. It just wasn't a thing. Yeah, and basically, Jordan, our vocalist, had a uh, Halloween party and was like, hey, like I want you guys to come hang out. Our bassist couldn't make it that night, um, but we it was still the first time me, Drew, and Jordan were together. And Jordan had unreleased tracks that like we never released. And of course we were drinking, smoking a little bit. Well, not him, but me and me and Jordan were, you know, we were drinking, smoking, we were playing the tracks Smoky and we were just every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's these guys for sure. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, we were just chilling and listening to the music and we were getting stoked. And like, I hadn't heard those tracks since we broke up. I actually literally forgot they existed. And I don't know, we just started spitballing like, Basically, I didn't really want to do Denialist if Drew didn't do it because we, we've we just been doing music for like 15 years yeah, together. Yeah, like I mentioned before, like, you know, like not that the other members don't contribute, but like we are definitely like the rock of like what's going on. We definitely like help plan the stuff. We launch it like, you know, we're, we're the catalyst for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, it does take, you know. um, so basically, I looked at Drew because I had already wanted to get Denialist, but I was like, man, Drew's got a whole other thing going. Like, I'm not trying to mess any of that up. And Drew looked at me and was like, hey, man, I'll do it if you do it. And I was like, dude, let's do it. And at first it was just, let's release yeah. these unreleased songs and see how people buy. Maybe get a mix and master like again or something. Um, but it wasn't like a full, like, let's be a band again at first. It kind of yeah. creeped into that. And then, um, so it kind of turned into a thing where, like, we have more resources now being older and just, like, understanding yeah. financial responsibility and, like, just figuring out life, right? Like, we all do. And my, um, what was he at the time? He's the bass player at the time, Sean, who's now in the new lineup of Denialist as well, was an Nefarious with me, and he's a studio engineer. So we had a lot more resources to work with when we could come here and just demo things, hang out. I mean, we spent a week making, you know, Denialist music. I don't think we used any of it, but we just able to get all the bad ideas out, all the good ideas on paper, and just really move forward strongly. Yeah, so we eventually, we wrote a bunch of songs. Like me and Drew, because that was about two years ago. So Denialist has actually almost been a band again for almost two years as of this October. Yeah, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. We just launched at the beginning of last month because the first six months to a year was like me picking up guitar again and like really like trying to write this style again. And we were going to put out those old songs, but we started writing and we were like, man, we're already – we already like this stuff and the style and the direction we're going better. Mm -hmm. And like it, things just kept snowballing and snowballing. At first it was, we're going to be an online project. Then it was, Hey, like these songs are really cool. Maybe we should like get a really like a cool producer to do it. We've never had the chance to do that. So it just kept snowballing. Then we were like music videos. Then we were like, do we want a tour? And we were like, well, I kind of want a tour. And it's just been snowballing and snowballing. And eventually we were just like, Drew and Sean, we just had to make sure, like, they would be able to do Inferius and Denialist. And they were like, yeah, dude, like, as long as, like, we can. I mean, I feel like the way to approach music nowadays is being multifaceted. Like, most people are in multiple bands. And if they're not multiple bands, they're, like, some, in some kind of music thing. Like, you're a merch guy or you're a photographer or a videographer. And, like, if, if it takes touring in two or three bands for me to be a full-time musician, I mean, let's just fucking do it, man. Plus, yeah, you, still get to see the, you still get to see the country anyway. Um, yeah. exactly. fellas, completely random. I'm going to look up some trivia and then I'm going to have JB, uh, JB ask a couple of questions. What is, you go, you can only pick one. 
What is your favorite movie or TV show? I'm going to look up trivia on uh, either a TV show or movie that's your absolute favorite. You guys can mutually pick. But uh, what I think we- we're going to separate because I feel very strongly about mine. It's yeah. silly, but Step Brothers, man. I die on that hill. Okay. What would you say? Uh, man, mine's. I have so many favorite movies. But now, since you're going to ask me questions, I'm trying you to think of about... one you know. Fuck it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with uh, Inception. That's a good one. Inception I like and Step Brothers. Her, JB, hit him. So you guys did Dayton, Ohio, correct? Yeah. Yes. So how's the music scene out there? Uh, is it is it more a heavier <laughs> scene or more uh, hip hop? Know this, but like a majority of Rise Core bands came out of Dayton, Cincinnati, um, even Columbus. A yeah, little bit. and like so, like um, right now, there's no venues. It's just like. COVID hit hard, man. There's just not a lot of small venues that support hardcore and vocal music like that. But Dayton's a mid, it's a mid, it's a city that's in between Cincinnati and Columbus. And most of the big packages and the most, most of the bigger tours go to one of those two cities. But it used to not be like that, man. We used to be, people wanted to be like us here. So like, Mm -hmm. um, it just, like local venues, unfortunately, there's not a lot, there is a lot of music enjoyers here still. So yeah. we still see a lot of support just from people who knew us from coming up and playing music back in the day. Yeah, we've been in this scene for about 15 plus years now, yeah, me and Drew. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, a lot of the people who know there's no venues here travel um, yeah. to either come see our bands in I also Columbus see a lot of conglomeration, like Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus. Like you see the same people at all the big package shows. Like people travel, which is great. That, that means you have a good community. We're only an hour away from each so like right. it's really not that yeah terrible. that's not that bad <laughs> yeah like even if you go diagonally from cincinnati to columbus it's like an hour and 15 yeah. like we're across the street from like a wedding venue dominantly but it's a, like a big like i would say a thousand cap room or so it's where miss may i throws their yeah shows. miss may does their new year show there because they're essentially from this area yeah they're from 20 minutes from here yes yeah, and cool. they uh they basically always throw like Every New Year's, they throw like a big New Year's hometown show, yeah. and they rent out this place and put some of the bigger locals on it, and it's always a good time. And that kind of keeps the scene a little bit alive, like even if you know newcomers or whatever, like so on and so forth. But definitely, people do be liking the heavy out here. They do, they do. even though we have yeah. like I like the heavy too. I like the heavy too. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. gentlemen! I think I, like- I think we're gonna stump you. I think well, I know we're gonna stump you, but can we stump you, sir? That's the question. Step Brothers is up first. Here we go. <laughs> At Robert and Nancy's wedding, Brennan says, I don't want to eat that dish. But what dish is he referring to? Salmon. Salmon, mother that is correct. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Let's see what you got. He has seen Step Brothers a couple of times. Oh, excellent. 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 So I'm going to take a massive bong rip right now. JB, hit him with one more. I got to find more trivia. Except this time it is about, would you say besides Step Brothers? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't even, dude, I'm going to fail so hard, but it was Inception. Inception, that's right. Sorry, and DiCaprio. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to, oh, yeah, it's not going to go well, but I'm going to try. I like that. I've seen it a lot. I will say that. So hopefully. Uh, I, Everyone. Do you want us to kind of focus on Death Letter today, by the way? We'll do whatever you guys want. Yeah, we can do whatever Because we can jam some old stuff if you have like an oldie that you, you're kind of working into the set. It, that, is the hit. Yeah, It That Betrays was like kind of the the song that put us like on even. Uh, it was like our first playlisted track. It was actually the first song we launched as Denialist. Mm-hmm. Like when we got Jordan as a vocalist, yep. um, it was the very first track we opened up with. And uh, it it did a lot for us. It carried us a lot of places. So, JB, did that you was... have did you have one more question, JB, before I uh, before I play this one? Yeah, uh, BG said you guys were getting ready for a show. Um, are you guys allowed to say where that is at? Or yeah, yeah, it's all... uh, we're playing October eighth in Columbus, Ohio, at the King of Clubs. Um, we are actually it's going to be our first show back as Denialis. It's got. Shadow of Intent, Enterprise Earth, um, and Fairy, and oh, I feel bad because I can't remember the last band. 
Uh, There's one more band. I'm not sure either. I'm bad at things. I'm, I'm bad. Shadow of Intent is the headliner, and we're very blessed to be on that show as our comeback. Uh, you know, this is a local open spot. I don't care. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, they said the last time uh, Shadow played that room, it was an it's an 800 cap room, and they said they sold it out last time they played. I'll take it. So it's going to be fun. It's a little bit nerve wracking. That's okay. why today, right now, we're actually having practice. Like as yeah, soon we're, as we we're get in off the studio, studio, currently. Yeah, we're like at our practice spot where we uh, do a lot of our recording and everything. And as soon as we get done here, we're just going to get right back to it. Tell that show next Saturday. Tell the boys we we said what's up and to to absolutely kill it, break a leg as they say, and uh, <laughs> Inception. Now this is a little bit of a, a mouthful of a question. I don't think right. you stand a chance. Here we go. In the third layer of the dream, Dom and the other team members find themselves outside a heavily guarded fortress on a snowy mountain. Unfortunately though, Robert is killed in this level and the incident jeopardizes the whole plan. I want to know who kills Robert. What is the name of the character in Inception that kills Robert in the snowy fortress? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to say I have no, no freaking clue. I like the movie. I, oh man, that's a good question. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. Mm. I mean, I that movie. I like so many movies. I just this one. No worries. Too- no this worries. Got- we're still we're still gonna spin it. It's uh, the answer is yeah. Ma- Maul. M A L. Dom wanted to kill Maul, but he hesitates. It's too late because Maul had pulled the trigger and kills Robert. Had you gotten it correct, it would have landed on this. So when I asked you guys to bring hot sauce. Now would be the time to have done the hot sauce, but no worries. I know you said you weren't going to bring it. So I'll take a shot. Tell me about, uh, well, we kind of did talk about It That Betrays. Let's play It That Betrays. If you're watching us right now on Twitch, please, please, please support Denialist. Hit hit that follow button, support them. They totally deserve it. Holy <laughs> shit. Good golly. It's a slapper. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank dude. Yeah. I you know, know you guys, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, you're fine. We got a lot of a lot of new music coming out as uh, we go on. We will actually be dropping another new single within. I would soon, say, soon. 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 I'll, I'll, just say, I'll just say soon. I'll Excellent. Say soon. Excellent. Guys, what, content's what you want. We'll have plenty of it this year next. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, we, I know you guys are busy. We only have time for a couple more. Uh, tell me the worst show you ever played. Every oh, oh, West Virginia. Did no, you know? that was the most disappointing one. I think uh, with Bury Your Dead and... Uh, oh, do we bring that up, though? Well, I mean, it just it was just a bad situation. The yeah. stage wasn't big enough for all the gear, and, like, we got there late, and things were just not going well. Yeah. There's a lot of technical difficulties on our end. and just Yeah, we also... We were letting another band use gear, and um, it just went bad. I'm yeah. just gonna put that. I'm not gonna say the band's name. Yeah, it, just, um, we, it was a gear share situation. That wasn't anyone's fault. I don't think everyone. It was just back in the yeah, it was yeah, back and like we could just barely play our instruments, and like it just. We got up on stage. And I remember we, we talked about that recently. We we're like, what is the worst show we ever played? And like, it's like instant. It's like that's it, man. It was that one. It was the, in our home, like Cincinnati, which was more of our hometown when we became Denialists. So yeah. it, it sucks. And I think it <laughs> radiated. Like even the fans knew we were not having a good time. Yeah, it was just bad vibes, man. Yeah, it was just we were bad vibes because like we just could not get it together. The West Virginia show, not to take up too much time, we showed up to a show. And we showed up and we literally, there was nobody there. But we had to ask friends to drive us to have a van yet. So we had like three favors, to like pack our gear in three different cars, drive it all the way there. And there was zero people on the show. Not that, you know, those things happen. Like I'll play my heart out for nobody. It ain't a big deal. Mm-hmm. But it just, it was sold to us that it was not the situation. We had played there like six months earlier in a packed room. Yeah. And not to mention like the band we played with was like a cover band for like, you know, more contemporary rock music, which is cool. But like, obviously not our gig the best thing that came out of that i felt really bad but the promoter had actually dipped at the show they basically were like oh i'm not gonna be able to pay them what i told them i was gonna pay them to play this and the bartender was actually a sweetheart i wish i remembered her name but she was super nice and actually just like went to an atm and pulled out money and paid us nobody does that that is amazing nobody does that (laughs) band has had so many miracles especially with like our van breakdowns and like oh, yeah. very hospitable people on the road 
we've probably met some of the nicest people this country has to offer because like a lot of times you get treated like shit. But yeah, a lot of times. We've time. had a lot of bad luck accompanied with good luck. Yes, yes. That is awesome. Luckily, but, the good luck has come when we needed it, like almost sure. the most. But, for sure. But yeah, we've had we've definitely had our fair share of uh, of bad things yeah, as well. Definitely. Well, I'm glad that you guys are still still trucking, and uh, Death Letter is fire. Uh, it That Betrays is fire. The only two we were able to play, but both of them are superb. Kill it at the show next week. Please tag me in something when the new single comes out so I can shoot something for you guys and promote it on our end and support you guys. If you get a chance yeah. to make it to California, please let me know in advance so I can attend the show. But you guys are awesome, man. Just keep doing your thing, and you're welcome back anytime. We really appreciate this. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you having us on here. And Thank you so much. Watch I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, lots of stuff for you guys soon. Thank you. Yeah, we will have a bunch Excellent. of stuff for you. Excellent. We'll be ready. Oh. Denialist! Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Let's go. Hell yeah.